All right, guys. Well, thank goodness uh, the cold streak has ended. Today is uh, my first green day after four red consecutive days. And um, it's thanks to momentum in uh, the, uh, the shipper sector. Uh, we had strong momentum on TOPS, TOPS, on Sino, S-I-N-O, also on GLBS and DCIX. Uh, I didn't trade the last two because I kind of missed good entries or felt the spreads were too big. But I did get some trades on Sino and Tops, and I'm finishing the day up $2,042. So green is good. Um, obviously, this is, you know, it gets me, um, you know, I mean, I, I'm down $14,000 uh, from my high. So this is, you know, takes $2,000 out of that. So down 12000 now. But you know, this, if you picture it, is uh, kind of that apex point, hopefully, in the flag, where I surged up to 100 grand, and then I pulled back four days down to my nine moving average. Today's the first day to make a new high. Hopefully, I'll just kind of keep grinding back up towards 100. But, um, you know, we'll see what the market's willing to give us again tomorrow. Now, today, I came into the market with a very different um, attitude than I had yesterday. Today, I wasn't trying to be aggressive and get a big win, I was uh, I was saying I'll probably only trade 2,500 shares or maybe 5,000 at most because I haven't been doing very well the last couple of days. So I'll just kind of test the water and, and see, you know, what's out there, if there's anything that's working, if there's anything that's looking good. And then, you know, next thing I know, I'm in <laughs> with 10,000 shares of Sino. But at the same time, uh, it was because we saw shippers running. It's because we saw the momentum, and I knew it was a it was a good setup, and it was a better setup than any that we've seen in the last few days. So um, now the trade on Sino, I'll show you guys uh, who are watching on Facebook. Um, so there's the PNL for today uh, over on StockTwits. Uh, here it is on my live trading account, um, and this is uh, the tops chart. So uh, TOPS today you know, out of nowhere, surged up 100%. I mean, just completely out of nowhere. Why did it happen today and not yesterday? You can see on the daily chart, for whatever reason, today was the day that it got some action, uh, squeezed from a dollar twelve to uh, $2.50. Now, right now, we're coming up towards the 240s again. So there were a couple of opportunities on this one, and I, you know, I sort of missed probably the best opportunity, which was this flag right here, this consolidation at the nine moving average. Uh, but I got in on, let's see, I took a couple trades. Um, the first trade I took on it was, let's see, I got to go back here and look at my um, my trades. So the first trade on it was at uh, 186, and I sold that one, uh, let's see, for a $12 profit. So I got in, it didn't work, I got right back out. And then I got in again at 231, which was on this red candle. It popped up to 235. It couldn't hold those levels. And so I stopped out of that with a, a $200 loss. And then I got back in at 240 right here for the break of the first five minute candle to make a new high, which is what I thought was going to happen when I got in at 235. But I got back in 240. We popped up to a high of 249. And then one of the things I showed on um, on my stock twits feed was a 60,000 share seller sitting at 250, and that guy was holding us back. And when I saw that, I bailed out at 240, 244. So stopped out, but with profit. So it got me uh, up 194 dollars on the name. Now, when I got in Sino, I got in it because Tops was already running. So, you know, Tops was showing strength, and I was like, all right, I'll jump in this one. Uh, what I like about Sino when I saw it uh, hitting the scanners was the fact that the daily chart had all of this room up to that line at 375, above 375 to 427. So I knew this one had a lot of potential. It was above its moving averages. And so I jumped in at 292 uh, as it was spiking up, and we got the spike up to a high of... 317, 319. I was waiting for it to break over 320. And then we had a, on that one, a 10,000 share bid sitting at 310. And when we came back down, the first candle to make the new low, I just stopped out. 
So I stopped out of it, took the profit, and you know what? That was absolutely the right thing to do uh, in that on you know in that particular case. So I took my two thousand um, dollars, twenty one hundred, got out of the trade, booked the profit, and that really put me uh, on the map. Now I was also watching GLBS, but I was a little concerned on this one for a couple of reasons. Number one, it was running into its moving averages as it was coming back up, and I thought that would be a problem. Uh, number two, the spreads were pretty big and the volume was pretty light. So even during this consolidation here, when it before it broke over 550, I mean there was less than like I think 400,000 shares of volume. It was really pretty pretty light on volume, and so it had these like 15, 20 cent spreads. And I thought, yeah, it looks interesting, but I don't know. Next thing you know, it goes you know from 550, 560 up to 750. So it was a great setup. It was just a little light on volume. I didn't totally feel comfortable on it. The daily, I was a little iffy on. So I played it safe and, you know, I missed out on a trade there. But uh, today's a day where I'm getting kind of, you know, back in the driver's seat, back in the green. And it's 100% thanks to momentum in the shipping sector. Um, you know, those four or five stocks getting some real action. So, you know, it's um, something that we haven't seen in the last couple of days. Now, really, I don't want to, I mean, hopefully tomorrow we have some, something a little bit more substantial, like a real catalyst um, that drives a stock higher. And that may or may not happen. I, I don't know. But, you know, as we get in towards the end of the week, I know that I <laughs> statistically have not been doing well on Friday. So I do have to be sort of especially cautious. Now, um, to look for a second at some of the trades um, students have been taking in the simulator. So let's see. Um, I was looking uh, just earlier today um, at the trading simulator and noticing uh, some of the profits that students have. So here's a student, uh, Michael, who's up uh, 2,600 bucks today. The stocks he's traded, uh, DPW, JNUG, CERU, MCRB, and TOPS. So MCRB is interesting because TOPS is obviously, and CERU were both in play. Um, but MCRB is one that we were watching um, a little bit earlier today. Let me pull up the chart on this one. Um, so this one, let's see, MCRB ran in the morning from nine ten dollars all the way up to twelve forty five. It was really strong, and then that first pullback got bought up. My concern on this one was that the spreads were a little bigger. Right now, you've got a seven cent spread, which is actually pretty tight. But earlier today, it was like a 20, 30 cent spread. And I felt like, you know what? It looks interesting. I like it. But this is one that I think I could really get into trouble with if I take 2,000 or 3,000 shares. And I sort of have gotten into this mentality that if I can't take size, it's almost not worth taking the trade, which is sort of uh, one of the things I was mentioning pre-market when I was kind of going over my watch list. Um, in the last few weeks, my green days have been not less than $2,000. I mean, they've been uh, between $2,000 and $8,000. That's a green day for me. So I'm going to make that kind of money by taking five to 10,000 or even 15,000 shares. I'm not going to make that kind of money taking 2,500 shares or taking 1,000 or taking 500. So if I see a stock like MCRB and I'm like, well, I probably can only take you know, 500 shares of it, it's almost like not worth it. And I said today that I was going to try to change that perspective a little bit and be willing to take smaller size just to sort of get myself back into the groove and try to break this red streak that I've been on. Uh, but that one was not one that I felt comfortable taking. Sino, I would have totally felt comfortable just having 2,500 shares or 5,000 uh, because I still could have made, you know, 500 bucks or 1,000. But then it ended up being one that I felt good enough to go heavier on. So I think that's kind of been the thing with my trades in the last, um, even the last four days of this hot, of this uh, red streak, that because I've been in this sort of um, habit of being really aggressive, I've had just some huge green days, you know, just ridiculous. But then when it's going the wrong way, I've obviously had the big red days. So trying to kind of taper that back into more of a um, more consistent strategy. Uh, or less, maybe more conservative share size has been tricky. All right, so that was um, Michael. You see Andy here. Um, his trades today looks like a couple that he's um, still holding. Traded um, 
uh, let's see, AMD, ROX, DGAZ. So a little bit of a different strategy here from what I usually trade, uh, but it's definitely put them put them on the map. Steve, YRD, MCRB, 900 bucks each. And, you know, it shows that you don't have to trade 10 different stocks to make really good money. Today I traded two stocks. Um, uh, Rawl here traded CERU, Sino, and Tops. So he had three stocks that he traded, and, you know, he kept it simple. He's not over-trading. You know, get in, get out, book your profit, move on to the next one. Uh, we can see Robert here. Um, he's got a couple different stocks that he traded today. And, you know, he's got a little bit of red on there, a couple red trades, but they're small losses, and then he's got one nice big winner on Momo, which is good. So, you know, it's kind of interesting to look and see uh, what some of these traders are doing uh, who are having some good days. A lot of them, you know, trading uh, the shippers, trying to capitalize on that opportunity that presented itself today. Um, but you can see some of them were trading CERU, which was follow through from yesterday. Uh, AD, PT, and INNL, those were in play today. Uh, in contrast, we can look at some of the students um, who lost money today, let's see, um, and kind of see what they were doing. And, you know, some of these guys, this is uh, AMD and JNUG, so he's trading gold, uh, which is a really uh, sort of tough one to trade. Bec you have to really understand how commodities trade. Um, higher priced here on ENDP, uh, NRG, GoPro, MT, so he's trading some different stuff there. Um, let's see, Ivan... CERU. Now, interesting here, he's trading the same stocks, but, you know, clearly his entries, you know, something's not quite right there. So if I look at his trades, you know, I can see that he's getting in at 66, getting out at 66, getting in at 570, and then stopping out at 528. So, you know, he took a pretty good size loss on that with 5,000 shares, um, you know, which is which will definitely knock you down quickly. And that's the thing that you learn with these uh, setups and that I've certainly learned in the last few days. You have to be smart about how you position yourself because if you're too aggressive, uh, you know, you can get stopped out really quickly. And before you know it, be down 4000 or $5,000. It really doesn't take much. Uh, another trader on gold, trading dust, down 9000 So, you know, we could see some big swings in the P&L, which is why it's really good that these traders are trading in a simulator to practice, you know, before they go live. I mean, that's that's the whole point of this, that, you know, you trade, you practice, and then once you've built up, um, you know, a period of success that you're able to transition to trading with real money. And if that would have saved me $30,000 um, if I had done that when I was getting started. So uh, nice to see that you guys are practicing about 385 traders uh, in the simulator today, uh, which is good. And it seems like it was uh, performing pretty well, um, quick order execution, which is awesome. So, uh, anyways, that kind of um, you know wraps it up for today. Overall, not a bad day. I didn't trade a lot. Um, you can see GLBS here breaking out. Uh, this is kind of what I was wondering would happen. This sort of lunchtime breakout. But again, um, you know, it's not a bad setup. Not sure why it spiked up here instead of you know, on this candle. We've been at the nine moving average for a little while, but the risk is higher. You know, right now you're at 781 and look at how quick it just dropped to 765 on the level two, 763. So imagine if you were in this with 5,000 shares, you know, 755 on the bid right now by 778, you know, you've got a 20 cent spread. That's a thousand bucks just across the spread. So that's the challenge, and that's why you end up seeing a lot of these candles end up having these big topping tails. They squeeze up, people marketing in, covering shorts, and then they come back down as people uh, bail out by hitting the bid. Because when you have that big spread and you hit the bid, you're you know you're down 20 cents. So, anyways, I you know I guess I missed this one, but I think I'll be okay with that and just happy to um, you know mark my day down as a green day on the calendar and uh, break, you know, that that four day red streak. So that was the first time in a, a, a quite a long time, quite a while that I've had four consecutive losing days. And obviously, you know, it's not fun. It's a little bit stressful, um, but it's part of the deal with trading. You know, last year I had a 56 day green streak where I was green every single day for 56 days. 
which is you know crazy. I was green every single day um, in my small account in January, and you know I've I've been fortunate. So last couple of days I was paying my dues. Maybe I was being too aggressive, but um, you know that's that's all right. I'll bounce back and you know work my way back up towards a hundred thousand dollars. So hopefully I will um, get there by the end of the month. Originally I had said the end of March was my goal to hit 100K. So I hit 100K like the first week of March and then pulled back. So now we'll see if I can get back to 100K by the end of March. All right, guys. So that's it for today. Uh, We'll be back at it first thing uh, tomorrow morning. And uh, hopefully we'll have some opportunities to uh, catch a a little bit of momentum. But I'll also be willing to sit on my hands if there's nothing clean. So make sure you guys uh, trade smart. And um, I will see you guys first thing in the morning. All right. Thanks, everyone. Let's be honest. If you made it this far, you must have really enjoyed that video. So what's stopping you? Subscribe right here and get email alerts anytime I upload new content. Until then, happy surfing.